All right. Well, welcome to this week's episode of Capitalist Investor. A new year is upon us. And you got me, Tony the Tiger. <laughs> you got Cool Hand Luke. And unfortunately, we got Derek. He's a little under the weather. And um, so Luke and I are going to take this on by ourselves. New year, new me. New, new, new year, another dollar. Another, another okay. day, another dollar. Okay. All right. It's... Uh, it's Nothing nothing seems too crazy kicking off the year. For yet. me, it does. Yeah. I feel like my whole just mentality in life changed. Wow. It's like just a brand new year, brand new me. I'm starting to wake up a little earlier already, getting back in the routines, you know. Nice. I'm going to start meditating in the morning, meditating at night. <sighs> I got to do that. Yeah. It's I, gonna, I'm looking forward to this year, man. I think I'm going to make some, some good changes, positive changes in my life. You know, I think we all kind of get off track in some aspects. When it comes to food and health and things like that and routines, we get kind of lazy and what, I'm what, really what, do, what are you going to do to meditate? You have an app. Do you get yeah, like, I mean, listen you got, to like, YouTube? What are you going to do? You get calm. And then I also have like, I just go on YouTube and type in meditational. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to sound too crazy, but I've been getting into like the, the chakra stuff, you know, like the, the, the root chakra and the sac- sacral chakras. You got like seven chakras in your um, body that you try to like open up. So you find like different Hertz and frequencies. Okay. Um, to open them up. So right, I'm well, trying it out. We'll um, talk about that another episode. Yeah. <laughs> we had a client. We had a client actually talk to me about um, something called uh, uh, it's, it's, it's something. It's called something walking. It's when you go out in the, in the forest, and you um, you you walk in the forest in the rain, um, and basically just you know embrace the the rain on your face and things like that. So I don't know. Maybe I'll try that out too. But we had a client talk to isn't me about that. You, actually, isn't that how you get ago. sick? Well, go walk in the woods in the rain and. <laughs> Come back. It's how you next heal? Thing you know your, you got a cold, or it's how you heal yourself, Tony? It's sinus heal. infection. <laughs> Maybe physically, but tight mentally. Heal yourself. I know. I, I get it. it. Sounds fun, man. It yeah. does. It does. It's like it's like how how weird how weirded out do you get when you like swim in the rain? Like you're already in the pool, and then when the sun's not out and it starts raining, like you're like, oh my god, I don't want to get wet. But you're in the freaking pool. Like it always freaked me out. I never like you get out of the pool when it rains, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. I digress. So, all right, what are we talking about today? We are talking about Apple uh, got downgraded by Barclays. Um, so, is it a rotten Apple? We'll yes. talk about that. Uh, the magnificent, magnificent. Come on, Tony, you I messed this up earlier too. I'm so bad at it. Magnificent Seven, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Meta, Tesla, and Amazon. 2023. These seven stocks drove most of the returns, 60 percent or mm-hmm. more than that uh, of the like return. 70, yeah. 70 of the S and P 500 are what's in. We'll just kind of give our quick take on what we feel. Uh, can these seven hold it up again? Yeah, maybe our favorites. Yeah, or, or favorites, favorites, or which ones are poised yeah. to maybe go, you know, in the wrong direction. Yeah, and that goes along with Apple too. The first one. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk a little bit about Apple and, and build it off there. Um, the big short guy, right? Uh, you know, who became famous during the housing crisis of what, 2008, 2009? Yep. Um, Steve uh, Eisman uh, had an interview on CNBC saying uh, everybody is coming into the new year feeling really good, um, but sees room for disappointment. Um, Luke, I believe you watched that, uh, that, that um, interview, so you can fill in yep. some of the things and we'll talk about what we expect in 2024. And then... Um, and then we talked about it in one of the prior episodes. We're, uh, you know, a couple guys here in the office. We do our stock pickers paradise uh, dinner where the person that has the worst portfolio at the end of the year has to buy dinner for the rest of the guys. And there are no. Um, Going to eat well the, the, tomorrow. Yeah, there's going to be We got a it tomorrow, of, actually. It's, yeah, it from is. From last year. Our last year's. Yeah, tomorrow it will be a good day. And it's not cheap. These guys have no. Um, no feelings for the loser. Let's just put it. I that got way. feelings. Or, so or, I'm gonna take it light. I'm gonna take it easy. Why they didn't take it easy on you know, us I'm a, the last try two to be years? A good guy. The, you know, it's a rough world. Rough waters out there right now. It is. All right. Because they didn't. That's just remember, man. Me and you. You know, treat others for less. like you want to be treated. Me that's and you. I, me and you like are going up against CFAs. Yes, In sir. the last two years, we did not do well. No, but we this did year well we this did. Year. Yeah, this year, this year we beat the bricks off some CFAs. So yeah, we'll we see what 2024 brings. All right, uh, getting into uh, Apple. So Apple was downgraded uh, by Barclays, and uh, what it, what were they down uh, the first day of the trading? Day? Four four and a half percent. Four and a half, which is one of the biggest drops it's had like in a very long time. Yeah, 
Um, but wait, basically, but I mean, the, the, it's interesting. These analysts, they downgrade stocks, but they don't downgrade the price target. I think the price target for them went from 161 to 160. So they downgraded at $1. Well, they're, I mean, but they're not. All right. So there's the downgrade, but like there's, I mean, what, what were they up last year? 25, 20, 30, 40%. Yeah. Right. Probably so probably there. 40%. Like it is a downgrade not to grow anymore, but I, I, let me ask you, like we've talked about this and it, and it's, Apple has had 20, 40% growth last year when they've had f- four consecutive quarters of declining revenue growth. Yep. Their revenues in 2022 were $394 billion. In 2023, they were $10 billion less. Yep. That's a not – how do you – how does your stock go up when – it's how multiple you, expansion. Well, how does, you, how does your multiple expand? So – when, when you're going about, when you're going backwards. When we talk about multiple expansion for the viewers out there. So, you know, you always hear this this term called price to earnings ratio, right? And price to earnings ratio is essentially a way for you to value stock and what someone's willing to pay for one dollar of earnings, right? And usually a PE ratio in the S and P sits around what, sixteen and a half, seventeen times? Yeah. Um, right now a lot of these tech stocks like Apple's of the world are sitting around twenty four to twenty eight times earnings. So it's like forty, fifty percent overvalued compared to historical metrics and the reason why you would be overvalued or or overvalued compared to history is because you're growing faster compared to history and the fact of the matter is like you just hit on tony is apple is not growing anymore it's priced like a growth stock but it's not growing and one of the reasons for this downgrade and one thing we've been outspoken about why we're not too bullish on apple you know we own it in a small sliver in our portfolio but we're underweight apple compared to the s p 500 um, you know, the reason why we've been outspoken is China. One of the reasons is China. China has been very bad for, for Apple, um, geopolitics involved, but also the middle class consumer in China is looking pretty rough. We think we have it rough over here. They're looking really bad over there. Yeah. So people aren't buying iPhones and services aren't growing as fast either for Apple that, you know, people were expecting the wearables, the services, you know, the uh, iTunes of the world and app stores, you know, they're not growing as quickly as people thought. I think Apple's got two issues. Um, I think saturation is one thing. Like, who doesn't? If if you don't have an Apple, whatever, by now you don't have one. I don't have one. Well, I mean, you might do. You what do you have? I have Samsung. There you go. I mean, like, did, were you ever Apple? I was. I okay. Switched. So you get people that have switched, and the reason people will switch or not choose Apple is because now they are lacking innovation. Yep. They just they have not come up with an earth shattering you know, uh, idea in a long, long, long time. And when you, you're going to, you're going to start getting, um, just other competitors getting better. I mean, you start watching like the Google phone and stuff like that, like, and they're just showing you how to take cool pictures. And I'm like, Oh, that looks really cool. Like Apple's not coming out and really showing us what they do with pictures. Like I don't take a lot of pictures and throw filters on them, but it looks cool if that's what you're into. But Another thing is, is that um, Apple is 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 maybe like behind the eight ball on the IA front, the the artificial intelligence because of the AI front. Uh, the, the AI. What did I say? I, IA. Ah, man, that's what I. I Investment just, I just do that. That's what we're used to. Um, artificial intelligence. So Microsoft le- leading the way in in. Um, AI. Yep. Uh, Google. They have their version of of Chat GPT. Mm-hmm. Um, Bard is what they call it. Amazon's got Lex. Um, Salesforce is Einstein. You know, you got all these different. Yeah, like platforms. you. Yeah, you have, and and they're creating this. And I read an Apple, or, or read an article that Apple is is working on their AI, um, but they're really not going to incorporate it in their phones until around 2027. And the reason that they're being slow and deliberate is that they're trying to create the technology, which could be it could be the revolution of of AI that they're going to make sure it's just in your phone. Right now, if you use, um, you know, AI on uh, through a micro Microsoft device on your iPhone, like it has to go to the cloud and then it comes back and they're worried about like security issues and data issues. And yeah. it, it's just um it's not very efficient right. for an, a, a phone yet. And so I think that that's what Apple is trying to do right now. And that's why they're 
they'll come to the table with something, but I mean, the world just changes so much. I, I mean, we're talking Apple, three years. Where you're talking three years away, like yeah. things can happen in three months in this type of. I think the, the thing is with Apple is they don't know what their next thing is like going to be. Yeah. Like they, they thought about getting into electric vehicles. Like they were, you remember they thought about like acquiring Tesla or they talked about it at least or the talk of the street was they, they should acquire Tesla, but they were looking to get electric vehicles. They were looking at doing like eyewear, you know, uh, Apple wear. Yeah. Yeah. For, the, uh, the, the smart the, glasses. Yeah. And being virtual the, te- the, the, the Tony Stark uh, yeah. eyeglasses. So right? they're looking at all that, that those kind of things, but they're not executing. They like have these ideas and people kind of get excited around it, but then they kind of fall through or they don't invest enough capital R and D to actually get it somewhere. Right. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like Apple just doesn't know the direction of the company anymore. And this is why our philosophy, I know Mark said it, I know I've said it, I know you know our CFAs say it. Is that Apple essentially became uh, an accounting firm? You know the, the accountants came in and basically, you know they're driving efficiency. They're really good at doing what they do, driving efficiency. But uh, they, they went from an innovation you know firm to account, like an accounting firm that just knows how to drive top line revenue, bottom line revenue, and um, cash flow. Yeah. You know, they're cash flow king, yeah. they're not a growth king anymore. Mm, that's a good way to look at it. Like I, I've said it before. Like may, maybe they're like the new IBM. Yeah, yeah. You know, IBM is incorporated in so much technology, but then they just got so big and became stalled an accounting out. firm. <laughs> Account right, right. They just became just this big, you know, defensive stock. Yeah. So maybe that's what that's what Apple might. It, that's what it might be, and what it may become. What's well, the 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 cycle of, of capitalism essentially is, you know, Steve Jobs was the one that made Apple what it was. And yeah. if you don't have Steve Jobs anymore, then things change. I know. Yeah, that's. Which Apple, well, I mean, Tim Cook's been phenomenal for shareholders. You know, the question is, is the way the path they're going to be phenomenal in the next 20, 30 years, right? Right. Anyway. All right. So the, uh, you know, Magnificent Seven, which ones will continue to be strong and which will be bombs? So we already talked about. You know, Apple, I feel they're the scariest because they're just not growing the revenues. Mm-hmm. Um, in my in my opinion, and but but I'm just not a Tesla honker. <laughs> um, I, I could go either way. Be like, they're they're a com- they're they're like a not a commodity, but a discretionary item. Yeah. Like you don't need a Tesla. Um, I think regulation on on tax credits if they're depleted or taken away could hurt their sales. Like I think there's a lot of variables for Tesla, yeah. but they are the best at what they do. No one else is even remotely close to the technology that a Tesla has. And, and would you agree? Yeah. Technologically. Um, I think that they are going to still struggle with this whole push towards EVs when people aren't ready. Yeah, I, you know, I think that they're ahead of the game. The question is, can they last the next four or five years as deployment of the electric vehicle, um, you know, mentality doesn't get um, eaten up by the public? Right? Yeah, so. I, I mean, they they are having continued record sales, and then you got somebody like Ford, Chevy, and everyone else that can't move an EV. <laughs> yeah, right. It's so. just from a stock standpoint, it's like <laughs> when you're barely delivering profitability, still valuation for us doesn't make any sense, right, for Tesla. Yeah. It never has and probably never will. So are they the best? Yeah. The question is, can they handle, like you said, the rough waters? Or can, like I said, the rough waters that might be coming up um, with demand possibly slowing as the economy, middle-class America continues to get squeezed over the next couple of years that just want to buy an eighteen, twenty-two, dollars $24,000 Honda Civic right. instead of a $40,000, $50,000 EV that they had to figure out how to do and charge and things like that. Yeah. So, so that's, you know, Apple, Tesla, that's, that's my opinion. I so, think yeah. they're, I think they're the scared, like the next kind of group I feel would be like Google and Amazon because they're, they're driven on their, uh, cloud, their cloud computing, yep. their, their cloud AWS storage. And Google has the, yep, their cloud and, and Google already kind of took it on the chin a little bit last year because they were slightly in line or actually they were slightly below in line numbers right. and the stock got mashed a little bit you know last year still up for the year but when they didn't report they didn't take off like the rest of them right um and then you got amazon in the same boat right yeah. and um i i feel that um you know those are the two headwinds for those companies because if if we do enter a recession it's gonna be 
you know, one, one of the things that people don't use, like they're not storing as much or they're not going to, they're maybe get rid of the, I don't know how you get rid of like cloud computing. So uh, here's my take on the Magnificent Seven and really um, other stocks outside of the Magnificent Seven is I, I I think next year and I've said this many times, I think next year is going to be the year where 2024 technology or 2025 this year 2024. <laughs> sorry, of course you knew that was going to happen and that always happens at the beginning of the year. It's like every time I'm writing a paper, con- you know, signing or, a contract, yeah. I'm putting the dates as you know 2023 yeah, yeah, still yeah. right. Yep. Anyway. I think this year you're going to want to look at companies that are benefiting from implementing AI solutions, right? Those companies that are able to, you know, go in, make things more efficient, not necessarily the full on suppliers of AI that have ran up very hard. So the NVIDIA's of the world, like look at that stock. NVIDIA is like the main darling of artificial intelligence. Right. Um, that stock's gone nowhere since July. You know, it's six, seven months. It's the same exact price, right? It's because it's a lot of the stuff is priced in, right? Um, one of the areas that I think is going to be the biggest benefit or fitter of artificial intelligence is Microsoft's of the world. I think Microsoft um, is a supplier of artificial intelligence, but they can also incorporate it into their own business to make themselves more efficient as well. So sure. you want to look at those companies that are actually supplying solutions, but can also implement them into their own business and become more efficient. So Microsoft might be able to actually develop it, implement it, and benefit from both ways. Yep. Uh, and to re- to put a bow on it, like either – all the other stocks are going to catch up or these seven stocks are going to come down yeah. to everyone else is what's going to happen. And um, I just don't feel as great about all seven of the stocks, yeah. but I, I do agree. I think of the, of, you know, the best of the whole bunch is, is Microsoft. Well, you've got Microsoft's got their cloud business. They have gaming business, their gaming business. Mm-hmm. They have, you know, uh, just their mission critical, mission. like, like, Microsoft software, software yeah, computer, right. yeah, their co- software business. I mean, think about everything they can implement technology and artificial intelligence into and completely revamp. Like, think about gaming, just for example, even. Like, you can go into a, a, a game and, and now play against artificial intelligence, you know, computers. Like, that's crazy to think yeah. about, right? All right. So, that's uh, the, the Mag 7. All right. Now, the um, big short, Steve Eisman came out and said he's a little. You know, everyone's pumped up in about 2024, and he could see room for disappointment. Yep. So there's, there were so many bears in the beginning of 2023, and now there's so many bulls yep. for 2024. Um, what a yin and yang is what I would call it. Uh, but, I mean, if you take a look at analysts, they're expecting 12% earnings growth this year and next year, 24 and 25 get it right not 23 anymore right <laughs> um operating margins continue to move higher now they took a backwards um step when everything was super expensive specifically just raw materials yeah. and, and and things like that everything's kind of settling out um but you know margins are moving higher even though we have higher labor cost higher materials um slowing top line um so how are they going to do it? Maybe they just keep on raising prices yeah. to keep the margins where they need them to be. And that just sounds like uh, nice inflation. <laughs> it sounds inflationary to me. Um, but the street's bullish. And it's, should we be concerned? Well, I think it's actually coming from somewhere else. So 12% earnings growth projecting, you know, a lot of people, like you said, people are expecting that come from the revenue side. So either the consumer needs to remain extremely strong or, like you said, you need to raise prices to get that 12% number. Um, which is inflationary. I think it's possible it comes from the other side. I think it comes from, like I've said, the technological, artificial intelligence implementation into businesses that drives efficiency. Jobs, unemployment will rise, but actual bottom line revenue, because overheads couldn't cut, it will actually drive 12% earnings growth to the bottom line. So I think it's going to come from the efficiency side this year, which is great for Wall Street, but not necessarily good for Main Street. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is um, I watched that interview, and one of the questions he also was asked about was this like, credit crisis. You know, is it cre- everyone's talked to, you know, suddenly we saw Silicon Valley Bank happen. We just passed $34 trillion on our national debt. I mean, that's insane. $34 trillion now. What we, Last time we talked, it was like $32 trillion. Like, we're just getting up there and up there with Ballooning. no stop in mind. Yeah. But he was asked, you know, because he called essentially the credit crisis in 2008, 2009 for the housing market. He was asked yesterday on CNBC, do you think there's going to be a credit crisis in the government? Um, with all this debt out there and even in the banking sector currently as it stands. And he's like, well, if you're in our business, 
if your timing is wrong or if your timing is not right, then you're wrong. Right. And um, what's interesting from the government side, he said, is, you know, the past 40 years since he's been in the business, every single year they're calling for a, cre- a default in the, the government. Right. And um, some sort of credit crisis in the government because we keep on spending money. We have been for 40, 50 years. So he's yeah. like, you know, people have been calling this for 40 years. And he said, have some humility. If you're wrong for 40 years straight, have some humility and say, maybe I was just wrong and this isn't going to happen. But um, I, I think that he was hitting at something that was important. But also, I think it's he, he's, you know. He's being strong and saying that we shouldn't worry about it. But, you know, he has a you know point is, you know, we're probably not going to lose our reserve status in America as, as the dollar being the reserve status. We probably aren't going to have a credit crisis this year, given we still are strongest nation, uh, strongest economy probably out there in the entire world. Um, so we shouldn't have to worry necessarily about that. But what we do have to worry about and think about is the path we're on and and figure out how to change that path so that way we don't look back 10, 15, 20 years and maybe one day we are actually right about some sort of credit crisis can credit crunch again. Yeah. Um, you know, 2023, it's just year of easy money. And I think it taught, I think it taught us one thing with all so many bears out there. It taught us to like stay engaged, yep. stay, stay invested money. You know, time in the market is greater than time in the market. Um, is, is one thing. Um, did you have to be in the mag seven to make money? No, but it helped, but you, that's why you had to have, you know, if you were just equally diversified, you know, you made a good, you made good money last year. Yeah. Um, 2024 could just be the year of, you know, where the 2023 laggards outperform. Yeah. So everything catches up. Maybe those seven stocks don't grow double digits this year but everything else around them does yeah um but well it's gonna be interesting is if we actually hit the earnings number of 12 percent that's but, but earnings don't actually or uh, multiples don't contract possibly who knows we had multiple expansion last year what happens if we have 12 percent earnings growth but multiples contract because the future outlook is kind of bleak yeah. Even though we hit the current 12 percent. Yeah, so, we could we, we could have pulled a lot of forward yep. gains because we, we, we probably did. I mean, yeah. that's what I would assume. Um, that's why active management is going to be very important to find those companies that are still in the laggard seat. Right. Um, so I think just on a risk adjusted standpoint, uh, take a look at like the, the dividend aristocrat index. It was only up seven and a half percent last year. Yep. Um, and those are the big boys, the, the companies that offer dividends, companies that increase their dividends annually. Like no yep. one wanted anything to do with them last year. Um, one thing was probably because of a four and five percent <laughs> treasury yield is maybe one reason. And, you know, like their their growth is more steady. It's yep. not exponential like uh, like the mag seven. Yep. Right. So um, but I do believe in mean reversion. I do re- believe in. Um, you know, sometimes looking where everyone's not, yep. you know, so, um, we'll see what 2024 plays out, but, uh, the fed could be the biggest well, look at Burry. The, the, you talked about Burry before. So you have Steve Eisman and then Michael Burry, the two big shorts, essentially from 2008, 2009, yeah. Michael Burry was calling for like these, he's buying puts and you know short positions on the market last year. And look what happened to the market. Right. So yeah. it's like, you know, even the, the biggest and baddest that predicted the last crazy bubble got it wrong last year it seems like right so again timing is everything and it's like yeah you know really the key i think for the market is paying attention to a lot of different things and then putting it all together staying invested until things really start to make absolutely no sense yeah um and when that happens scaling back a little bit right because the market can be what's the saying the market can be irrational longer than you can stay solvent or something like that (laughs) yeah so maybe we have another five years of the market being somewhat irrational, but you have to pay attention to when things really start to take a turn, you know, have discipline. I know for us, if stock's down 10, 15% from when we bought it, we sell it. Yeah. No the, the, the irrational part. Yeah. Having a, a buy sell discipline, you know, and take, trying to take emotion out of it is very important. Yep. Um, but the fed could be such a big key this year. Um, because the market melted up since probably you know, the beginning of November, yep. mid, 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 mid October of 23, because Powell said, Hey, I'm, we're probably going to have three cuts next year. And the market somehow heard six cuts. Yep. <laughs> and that's what's being priced in. And think about like the, 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 the two out, you know, the, the, the two outcomes of that. Um, what if there's no cut? Um, 
that's going to make a lot of people upset because they're pricing in, in for the cut um, and higher for longer. It, it seems reasonable because they'll go back to, um, you know, the 80s when um, they didn't go higher for longer and they cut rates too fast and created hyperinflation, basically. Yep. Um, they can't afford to do that right now. <laughs> they got to get this right. And I think like I think they'd rather you would think that the Fed would rather see something broken than try to like massage this thing into a, you know, a, a soft landing is the what they call Powell it. The question Powell has to ask himself is, does he want to go down as one of the greatest Fed chairs in history or one of the worst Fed chairs in history? And Didn't Yellen wrap that up for... <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Didn't Yellen wrap that up as yeah, maybe the worst? Probably or Bernanke maybe. maybe. I don't know. Um I, I think Powell knows what he needs to do. I think he's just getting too much pressure for things that other people want him to do. Yeah. So if he does what people want him to do, he'll go down as one of the best. We'll have probably somewhat of a soft landing. We'll get, re, you know, we'll, you know, stimulate the economy with lower rates. We'll push the Ponzi scheme out another 10, 15 years. In the next two, two, three Fed chairs down the road, we'll have to deal with the issues. Or he can actually do what needs to be done and kind of break the system a little bit get us back to reasonable um, organic growth rather than creating the Ponzi scheme with cheap money again. Right. Um, he'll go down as one of the worst in history because the public will look at him as a bad thing. You know, what's the, what's the saying? Hero, what's this hero, hero saying Superman, you know, or not Spider-Man, every, not, Spider-Man. Not, oh. He said something like, you know, what did, what did his grandfather say to him? Spider-Man when he was dying, you know, you, you live your, you live not, long, not every, live not, long not, enough for <laughs> yourself to become the villain or something like that. Or you, mm. You, you you know I've got I gotta look this up man like yeah. this is a really good saying that I'm trying to get out right now but essentially like you you're, you stay a hero for long enough until you see yourself return the villain right. if you stay alive long enough yeah. essentially and that's what I essentially think is gonna ha- happens in a lot I always, of ways I always thought it was not not every hero wears capes <laughs> <laughs> I don't know man I'm yeah. gonna find this when we go in the next topic yeah. but but think about like uh, think about like the cuts though um, the cut could be a form of stimulus and if stimulus could create more inflation. So I, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see what he does. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Okay. So, so is that what, is that what Jerome wakes up, stares himself in the yeah. the mirror and says to himself? Yeah. In, in I'm his, a hero right now until I'm his, not. In his mind. Yeah. In 10 years, he'll be the hero for 10 years. If he does what the public wants him to do. He'll be a hero for 10 years, and then 10 years down the road, he'll become a villain because we'll look back and say we should have kept rates higher. Yeah. All right. So let's get into – let's wrap up the show. We've got our uh, – Luke and I, our uh, our stock pickers paradise picks. Why is it called I, that? Who made that up? Stock I don't pickers know. paradise. I don't know. Because, <laughs> I mean, there's really no monetary value to it other than if the loser has to probably pick up a – couple thousand dollars couple, steak dinner yeah like it's not cheap right um i'm getting the so best whiskey I ever, i'm getting a whiskey i've never had before yeah that's what we did last yeah. year i think they had like a couple different wellers that yeah i think like robbie got like the, yep. the 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 that wellers in the orange that's right barrel so i think was, i think that's their single barrel Ooh. so that's a couple hundred dollar bottle. pretty good yeah. uh it, it it depends on if you're buying it msrp or on the black market <laughs> that's right. on the black market yeah it's a couple hundred bucks <laughs> MSRP is like 70. It's yeah. crazy. All right. So I my lesson from playing this the last few years was I um during 2022 I picked a bunch of like m- like small companies and I just got beat down. Like my portfolio was down 60 or 70%. Last year I kind of just, you know, kind of went a large cap and then a mid cap and then maybe a flyer and then some stuff that was binary um, event, you know, either going to be good or bad. Um, most of my stuff worked out, and I'm either in first or second place this year. Uh, so with that being said, I'm trying just not to be in last place <laughs> because I can see the, 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 the edge on both, of, on, on both sides of this sword. So I, I took three larger stocks. Um, I took Boeing because, A, they have a good – backlog of of work um there's a lot of there's a lot of demand for new planes yep um and they're and they're poised to just take advantage of that the only thing i can say is 
they need to stop messing up. They need to stop messing up their designs. They need to keep the planes, um, the new planes in, in the, the air, air. <laughs> in the air. Um, Boeing not, 737 Max was a yeah, off that, for a little bit. Yeah, that was that was not a that was not good, right? And that hit right around COVID, where they really took it on the chin. So. You know, let's hope there's no more lockdowns and hope there's no more <laughs> design falters. Um, another company I took was Visa. Yep. And again, I, I do want to say one thing. This is not investment advice. I would not like say load up on these stocks. It is not. This is more for fun. Yep. So it's some of this is just pure gambling. Some of these stocks we do own in our portfolio, yep. at least the ones I'm rattling off. I, two of the ones I'm rattling off, we do. Okay. So, you know, I, I adhere to some of our, um, our, our investment team's advice and, uh, well, sometimes things, we go lone wolf now, now, Yeah. <laughs> but now then you got to like, go pick that dark horse that like, you know, no one would probably touch with the 10 foot pole. Um, I just didn't do that, but I also, I, I took visa is my second one. I just figured that with, with over a trillion dollars in, in credit card debt and interest rates going up that these companies are going to continue to print money. My only concern is that default goes up. People yeah. just start defaulting on their credit cards and because they don't care about their credit and whatever that might look like. Um, so those are, that's the pro and con of that stock. And then match.com or match, they own like everything, right? Tinder match.com. Like they own all kinds of dating services. And I'm like, regardless of a recession or not, People are going to still try and find love. find love out there, whether it's for one day or one year or forever. <laughs> That's what I figured. We're just and, a and, love, and, and, love kind of guys. And then, know? hey, you know what? I, I look at it like if um, if there's a recession, people might be more active on the that thing because they might not have a job and they're just trying to stay busy. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and, um, listen, I, I don't disagree with you, man. I think I, that's a great, I think that's a, a stock. And, I know and their reve their revenues have been in client. They uh, just implemented a new, uh, uh, pricing model Yeah, too. They have like a high tier, um, pricing model now for like 500 bucks a month. Yeah. So if, like, if you do have a lot of money and you want to find love, like apparently you get some exclusive benefits. Okay. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, tailored, tailored toward that, you know, probably 45 year old yeah. couple that's looking to, f hasn't found love yet that are very successful that are, Looking for that, I think that's yeah. a good. And, and, and in one, in one of my, and one of the CFAs, I he saw my picks and he goes, yeah, like they were on my like my short list. Didn't he didn't pick it too, but like he it's goes, man, nice. that was it's it was nice. It was good. nice conf Yeah, it was nice confirmation that like they're like, yeah, that that was on my radar. So what do you got, Luke? All right, so two stocks we own. One is Accenture. I talked about it last week on Charles Payne. And Charles Payne seemed to like it, which was good. But um, Accenture is essentially one of the biggest consulting firms in the world. And with this technological implementation, AI implementation next year, um, all these companies, you know, all these large corporations like the Boeing's of the world or, um, you know, uh, any other company that's looking to implement any kind of technological solution will call Accenture. So ACN's a ticker we own in our personal or in our, in our, in our all of our portfolios here at SWP. Um, I think that stock's great, not just next year, but next 10 years. Um, second one, Raytheon, uh, geopolitics heating up. Uh, mm -hmm. I know this was one on Matt's shortlist as well, one of our CFA's shortlist as well that we talked to, um, mm -hmm. which made me feel good, kind of like you did, Tony. Um, uh, Raytheon is, uh, you know, just a defense name, um, you know, with China, Taiwan possibly happening, things heating up in the Middle East, government printing trillions of dollars, a lot of that going to defense. I think Raytheon does pretty well next year. And it's a defensive name, not just defensive stock, as in defense for the, our country, but it's more of a defensive nature name to where, you know, if the economy does take a turn, that one should hold up pretty well. So mm -hmm. that's uh, the second one, uh, both being really large names. Um, I, I I am one of those guys that like taking a dark horse um, kind of uh, lone wolf uh, stock. Um, I do want to preface this even more on what Tony said. This is not investment recommendation. <laughs> um, I I have owned this in my personal portfolio recently. I think it is um, an interesting stock because one of the things we look for here at SWP is management teams. Management teams are very important to stocks. And when someone gets a new management team, I really look into that stock to figure out why this new management team was implemented and what the future outlook is. So this stock is called Verify Me, V-R-M-E. It's a small $10 million nano cap stock that I expect to possibly double or triple over the next couple of years. They, they trade publicly? They trade publicly, $10 million nano cap, do about $20 million in year, year revenue. 
Um, but That's this stock, small. oh, it's so small. It's so small. That's why you can only put a small amount of money into this because you're going to move it a lot, right? Yeah. If you buy any more. But anyway, um, they just got a new CEO earlier this year. Um, essentially, they do logistics for counterfeiting and anti-theft um, for goods, like QR codes and tracking data logistics for um, uh, supply chain logistics. Um, they just got a new CEO earlier this year that sold their comp- his public company uh, that he was C- previously CEO of uh, for $500 million, um, grew the revenues like crazy from like 2005 to like 2020 uh, before he became CEO of uh, Verify Me. Essentially, he's an M&A guy, corporate M&A guy. So they're looking to optimize the business, um, increase the profitability, increase the bottom line, and probably sell it to another buyer a couple of years down the road. So mm. that's essentially my thought process is this is an M&A target for a bigger firm to, for yeah. anti-theft, logistics, things like that. Probably get bought out $40, 50000000 million a couple of years down the road. Yeah. Um, I, think, I, I think this stock could be a dark horse in the next year. could be a complete dud. Right. But um, at least it gets me some, what's it called, beta. <laughs> some some beta yeah. to the market um, compared to Raytheon yeah. and compared to I, ACN. And you know what? I mean, if it takes off, great. If it doesn't, you, I mean, I've known that some guys have that you know took in companies and then they they go well, I bankrupt. Think last year, I had the best stock and I had the worst stock. Yeah. For this this for this uh, one, I think I came in first or second as well. I don't know who's ahead, yeah. you or me or. So what, we're very close. I mean, you're very close, but it's interesting. You can have the best stock in the world and the worst stock in the world and still come ahead. Yeah, you, your one went bankrupt and the one <laughs> yep, yep. saved it because yep. it 200%. Two or two or three X or yep. something. Yep. But yeah, I mean, you talk about Raytheon. I, I know that we you know, either own that or have owned it. And um, I know one of the companies that's in that same realm that I thought about was like General Dynamics. Yep. Um, we were... We wanted to buy it, then it, and then the technicals got away from us. Um, but they're, um, you know, an aerospace slash defense company. Yep. You know, they make they make uh, private jets, and but they also make a lot of, you know, defense, you know, uh, airplanes and in ammunition and things like that. So, um, never know what how crazy the world is. You might need all that, and if they do, you're going to see a, a pop in those stocks, unfortunately. Right. Yep. So. All right, that's it for today. Um, Hope everyone had a happy new year. Yeah, happy new year, everybody. Um, I saw the walleye drop like I talked about. Did you? Yeah, it was cool. Okay. You know, just Did you take a video a of it? I took a picture, yeah. I okay. I need to see YouTube that. I need to see yeah. that. Um, and, um, you know, it's the beginning of the year. A lot of, lot, of, <laughs> lot of days to go, but, you know, have a happy, healthy uh, new year. And um, we'll see you next week. If you have any um, ideas for the show, please reach out. And um, you hopefully, know, D's not sick next week. And hopefully, D's here. <laughs> we're, we're not sick. <laughs> yep, and he's not bringing. Yeah, told him to stay home to make sure he doesn't bring it into the office. And you know, he's here in spirit. <laughs> All right, guys, um, have a great week. We'll see you next. The opinions expressed in the podcast are for general informational purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any investment, legal, financial, or tax strategy. It is only intended to provide education about the financial industry. Please consult a qualified professional about your individual needs.